For those of you who don't already know Nathan, he's our founder. He founded the company 32 years ago and has remained as our CEO for the entire duration of our business. We don't often get him at events like this. He's usually here in Boulder, so having an event like this in Boulder makes it possible for Nathan to be a part of it. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Nate. That's a clicker if you want it, by the way. For advancing the slides. Thank you, Molly. About uh, 28 years ago, we're 32, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. But about 28 years ago, my mother said to me, Honestly, Nathan, it's a good thing you were the founder because if you had any other position, the company would fire you. And so uh, I managed to weather through a lot of times when, when I didn't know what's going on and, and uh, we're kind of making it up. Uh, but I've been very fortunate, very blessed to, to uh, be in a great position where we can, we can drive forward our success. We're surrounded by a great team in a, in a wonderful location. Um, and uh, we are really seeing uh, our, our success accelerate. So this is our first press and analyst event held in our hometown of Boulder. And in, in an era of outsourcing and offshoring, Spectra actually designs, develops, and manufactures all of our products right here in Boulder, Colorado. Today I'm going to speak to you about BIG, uh, some industry trends and what is happening with Spectra. Then we're going to share Spectra's uh, vision. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about execution, the act of getting it done. But first, back to that previous point, today is a little bit more than a meeting for us. Almost to the day, it's our 32nd birthday. That little apartment there, up above the Jeep, uh, is where Spectra started, and I was studying electrical engineering at the University of Colorado. It's about three miles east of where you sit today. It's hard to believe now, but we actually designed, built, and sold our first storage products from that little apartment. So today we're going to speak a lot about big data. Just how big? Exascale big. Going back to our roots in that apartment, a kilobyte was a lot of information. But what is an exabyte? Well, first think about a megabyte. A million of anything is a lot. Well, an exabyte is a million million megabytes, or a million 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 bytes. Now that's really big. So you're going to hear a lot today about our vision for exascale storage. So as the headline says, storage follows the path of processing. And you all know what that is to the left, but uh, we think the Apollo uh, space shot was a really good example of uh, kind of the, the transition and the change that we've seen in our industries. The picture in the upper right, that's the uh, solid state Apollo Automated Guidance Computer or AGC, and it was developed by MIT's Draper Labs and built by Raytheon. It has 2K bytes of storage. In the mid-1960s, some 75 of these Apollo uh, computers were built, each containing over $100,000 worth of semiconductors. I think there were 4,100 three-input NOR gates on a chi uh, each chip had one three-input NOR gate. Uh, but it was critical. The, the AGC brought mankind to the moon and back several times. And the overall production program cost nearly a quarter of billion dollars. And those were 1960s dollars. Now, this right here, that's a picture of my watch. My Timex watch has as many transistors, more transistors, more storage, more bandwidth and it costs less than $100. So the, uh, this is really a good example of, of Moore's Law. Just a moment here. So when you can put as much processing power into a consumer grade watch, you can almost say that processing power uh, has become free compared to say the, the computer that took the man, mankind to the moon and back. Um, and that's, that's going to be a little bit of an example of what we're looking at from a storage standpoint. 
So this is NASA's Pleiades supercomputer. Uh, it is reaching for exascale performance. Right now, it has 111,000 Xeon cores, and it executes instructions at a peak rate of 1.3 petaflops, or 1.3 quadrillion floating point operations per second. And uh, we have a long-term relationship with NASA. I think maybe some of you saw this in the, this ad that we have running at Denver International Airport, but NASA bought our first T-series library, a T-950, uh, associated with the, the Mars mission, and they use it to, to this day. So for this particular NASA site, NASA uh, Spectra provided uh, the storage, multiple systems for uh, storage and archival. And recently, we received a contract from NASA to upgrade these storage systems to a capacity point of 0.4 exabytes through 2012. So that's really big. Yet we have bigger customers and even larger installations coming. And finally, Spectra is getting big. We are now uh, in the top three private employers in Boulder County. Uh, we're also in the, the probably number one revenue-wise. Uh, and if we keep growing at this rate, we're going to be one of the largest companies in the state. And we'll tell you more about that today. So one thing that can be consistently said about Spectra is that we have a big vision. Over today, and for our analysts tomorrow, we will share that vision. And I have no doubt that your questions and your input will help us expand it. But what is vision without execution? Well, for those of you who followed us for so many years, you know that Spectra executes like nobody else. So if there's a broad theme for what we will talk about uh, our vision-wise vision -wise today is, is I, or I would label it molecules to galaxies. And you're going to get an insider's view of this theme just in time for our announcements. So starting with galaxies, let's talk about our vision for data storage. Much like my wristwatch example, we believe that if we can provide enough storage at a low enough cost, storage can become essentially free for most applications. So today, we're going to tell you about the world's largest capacity data storage system, truly an exascale storage machine. But more than just that, this machine has the lowest power consumption, the highest density, the most reliable media, and it has the lowest cost to maintain. I want to reiterate, Spectra will be announcing the world's largest capacity data storage system. And today we're going to talk to you about how mankind can be advanced by exascale storage. Just as the Apollo space program launched the computer revolution in the chip industry, what will exascale storage do for the world? At Spectra, our customers are already bringing us a multitude of opportunities to deploy exascale storage. We have programs underway where ultra-high capacity, low-cost storage will advance science, medicine, genomics, nuclear physics, geophysics, semiconductors, and even astronomy. And as far as industries are concerned, together with our customers, uh, we are uh, are uh, starting to deploy exascale solutions into media and entertainment, supercomputing, internet storage, petroleum exploration, surveillance, and cloud computing. And finally, to that last point, two years ago, we had a vision of, of bringing together a network of partners to make what is traditionally offline storage perform like online storage. And our vision was to create an industry alliance to, to bring tape and other forms of storage forward and manage them as files. And that has become the Active Archive Alliance. But what value is exascale storage if it's not reliable or manageable? Well, getting back to the galaxies to molecule side on the molecular side uh, scale, we will tell you about a new technology Spectra has developed to dramatically improve media reliability. 
At the system scale, we will tell you about some quantum steps that we have taken to increase information, redundancy, and durability. And at the architectural scale, we will tell you about user interfaces and system software capabilities to advance uptime, reporting, and manageability. We will also share with you our vision for performance. Today, we will show you technology for increasing data transfer rates while simultaneously increasing reliability. And we will show an advancement that allows migration of data in increments up to a half a petabyte or more at a time. Today, we will introduce you to two new executives that have joined Spectra to broaden our offerings into new fields of storage hardware and software. And today, we are going to show you a new facility to allow our growing teams to continue to work together in a campus environment. And you're going to get to meet and hear about some of our customers with applications running from storing high-definition videos of the natural and cultural worlds to studying subatomic particles and to managing healthcare. And speaking of customers, we will share with you something we started noticing 10 years ago. Spectra users, like our NASA site, NASA Goddard, tend to, use, tend to keep and upgrade our products for extended periods of time. Not the typical three years IT products have, but more commonly six, 10, 12, even 15 years. Now let, let me tell you, the dark side of our industry is the common practice of locking in customers, where vendors lock in customers and really extort ever-increasing support revenues. At Spectra, we have always believed in treating our customers with respect and as partners. So today we're going to tell you about our new service price lock, which allows our customers to utilize and maintain our products with predictable service costs well into the future. So that's about it. You're going to hear about big data and what is bec increasingly becoming a big company. You'll hear about our vision and our execution. Once again, I want to thank you for coming to our event, and I think it's time to hand the mic over to our SVP of Marketing and the visionary behind the Active Archive Alliance, Molly Rector.